Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron, and we have been having a special guest. You know who that is? Tina Cannon. That's right, Tina Cannon. So we've been doing all kinds of stuff, and you know, in one of our recent videos, we got asked so many questions about something that you hit on. Do you know what yeah. that is? Cold smoking. That's right, cold smoking. That's not what they meant about cold smoking. It's not? No. Oh my God. Okay, well, since you're the expert on it, what do you think that we make a video about cold smoking today? Well, I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to cold smoke in 197 degree weather <laughs> yep. and 300% humidity. That's about accurate, so it is hot out here, isn't it? But seriously, can we cold smoke in hot weather like this? I mean, yes. it is close to 100 degrees today. Yeah, well, yeah? being that we're over more in the shade because okay. naturally the egg will heat up right. to above 100 degrees if we set it in the sun. So okay. we've moved over into the shade. All right. And the key is very, very low temperature. You just want smoldering charcoal or smoldering wood. That's it. Only smoldering, not necessarily heat. That's it, folks. You heard it from the horse's mouth herself. Not to say that you're a horse, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying, all right? So um, we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of charcoal going here, and we're going to get started on this. I'm excited. Why don't I go inside and grab some cheese, and we'll tell the, tell the fine folks what we're up to. Yeah, well, go get the cheese. I'll go get the cheese. To the refrigerator! Oh, my God. So a little inside information. We knew we were going to do a cold smoking video today, so we went to the store and got some cheese from the cheesiest man himself. Speaking of cheesy men, <laughs> Ooh, that would be so you. here we have our entire plates of cheese that yes. I just went out and bought. <laughs> I just went out and bought them just now. Yes, of course you did. You told them, didn't you? No. No! I said nothing. But for your first time smoking cheese, let me suggest getting harder cheeses because a, a soft cheese, especially in this type of weather, is much more difficult to manage. So start with something that's much more firm, like an aged cheddar, We've got some Gouda. We've also got some Parmesan here. So start with harder cheeses your first time. But Thank I would you. suggest, especially in the heat that we have today, yep. I would put this in the freezer while we get everything going on the grill. That okay. will give us a little bonus extra time to smoke. Now, do you do that when it's not 155 degrees out too? Like or? in the winter, uh, I don't. But okay. here, I think we really need to do that. Okay, so you know where I'm going, don't you? To the, the freezer! freezer! So we did get a lot of comments and DMs about the setup of the grill for cold smoking that we showed you in the previous video of the five tips. But I wanna go over it again with you today just to make sure you've got it. So I've got it set up in two zone cookie, but we're using a deflector, a cast iron deflector, and we're gonna set up some charcoal way on the opposite side. And I like to use use charcoal for this because it doesn't burn quite as hot. Use charcoal? Yes. I happen to have some right here. And that's the perfect <gasps> amount. It is. We've got about five pieces. The reason that we're gonna use, we use charcoal is that it's actually gonna burn a little bit cooler. It's gonna burn a little bit longer than fresh charcoal. So it's kind of giving us an advantage when it comes to cold smoke. Right. Now we've only got five little pieces here. The great part is we're gonna put it in, we're gonna light it. And Tina, why do we leave it on two zone cooking like this? We do not want any direct heat on the cheese at all. We basically just want that smoky flavor and keep it below 100 degrees for a harder cheese. And then we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have enough charcoal, which is a handful, to get our wood smoldering. Now these bourbon barrel chunks are gonna give great flavor to the cheese that we're gonna to smoke today. Now Tina, if I remember correctly, the whole reason for leaving one side open is so that it's kind of for temperature control, right? Right. So if it gets too hot, we can just take these nice long tongs, which are available on our website, link below, uh, and take some of the hot coals out and put them right. someplace safe, obviously. And if it gets too cool, we can put that burning coal right back in. Is that right? Exactly. Perfect. I want to spend a minute on something that Tina kind of touched on here. But so what we're doing is we're setting up for two zone cooking. This side is going to have nothing over it. So you're just going to be able to access the charcoal. This side, you want to have a half moon deflector in here. If you do not have the big green egg, deflectors. We sell this on our website. It's a, actually made of cast iron. It's a half moon. We also use it for cooking. It's actually made for cooking. But in this instance, we're just going to use it as a deflector that's going to keep the direct flames and direct heat directly out from underneath the cheese. If I could say the word directly in there a couple more times. Yeah, two more great. times. Yeah, two great. more directly, yeah, directly, directly, directly. There you go. Mm. Why don't you tell me something about these things? I love them. She I, loves I them. love cooking with these. These are really from, mm. Let me smell. oh my God. That's not a party in a bag. I don't know what is. These are really from bourbon barrels. You can see the charcoal 
that gives the flavor to the bourbon. This is so good with so many different types of cheeses, especially the hard cheeses yep. that Ron chose at the yep. store today. Yeah, the smell is intoxicating. Oh, it's like a cocktail. <laughs> intoxicating. <laughs> I just got that. That's a grenade joke, folks. I just <laughs> tuck me in there. All right, all right, so how much are we gonna use? So we're gonna smoke, you've got, a, what, a couple pounds of cheese, yeah, is that what you got? I would probably just start with one large one, and okay. I think that will good, but when we light this charcoal. I'll tell you what, let's take this out. Okay. All right, so we can see better. When we light this, we're gonna use a torch to light this, because the key is we wanna get this barrel wood smoldering, not necessarily on fire, but smoldering. We're just gonna add it right to the charcoal, just like this, and when we take the torch to it, you're gonna light the edge of it to get that nice smolder smoke. Are we better off to light the charcoal first and then add the block in there, or are we better off to just I light it right it. on there? The way I do it is I just light it all at one time, because literally as soon as it starts smoldering, yeah. I'm gonna sit the cheese on it. All right, so now where do I light it? I would get the very edge of the wood in this okay. one small piece of charcoal okay. to get it smoldering. So you wanna like kind of light both of them a little yes. bit, okay? Yes. All right, let's do it. JJ George Torch to the rescue. So once you start seeing a little bit of smoke, yeah. it should be ready to roll. There you go. All right, charcoal is lit. Now, I have a question for you, All okay? Right. So we know how to light the charcoal, we know how much charcoal to use. What about our vent settings? Where do we put our vent settings at? Is that, right. We need to know that. Yes. So if you're gonna go ahead and set that inside, and we're gonna set the vents now at the very bottom, literally, about a sixteenth of the inch. I okay, mean, like so, a fingernail's width. So sort of like, uh, like, like about like that. Just tiny. Okay. And then once we know this is smoldering, we put our cheese on. Okay. I close the lid. Okay. And the same thing with here. We want just a little bit because you want this whole dome like that? to hold that smoke in. Like that. I would even do smaller. Than smaller that. than that? Yes. Oh my goodness! Whoa, she's crazy, folks. Tiny. 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 Like your head. Like my head. <laughs> yeah, said nobody ever. <laughs> but as small as possible. And you know, this is a different regulator cap than I even have it on mine. So right. this is a learning curve for me in okay. using this top. And I also use a heat gun, which most people don't have, but my husband has. You mean like an infrared temperature yeah. gun? Like you can read the temperature. That way the I can keep it around 100 and if I need to remove a piece. It's not necessary once you, I mean, he, Really, you want this to barely. So that's kind of what we want. We want it like 100 degrees, which is going to be mm -hmm. basically our lowest setting right. on here. Okay. I mean, where you just barely feel any warmth at all. Okay. That was why it's so important for us to do it in the shade. Right. Okay. Right. That's why we set this tent up above us too, because we didn't want the sun beating down on the egg. Down here in South Florida, the sun beating down on this will heat this up to over 150 degrees inside. It's insane. I'll, go, I'll walk up to it and I'm be almost 200 degrees with no charcoal, no fire in it. So it's crazy. All right, I guess we're just gonna wait for this thing to smoke now, huh? Right, exactly. All right. all right, Tina, well, I see we got some smoke coming out here, all right? We're not at 150, so that's good. How do we know? Because, I mean, it doesn't go down to 100 degrees. How do we know? This trusty infrared thermometer. Oh, how good of a tool is that? I found this in your toolbox. Wow. So I'm just gonna measure, and we wanna try to be, if we can be at 90, that would be good. We're at 92. 92.5, 92.5. Don't lie to the people, it says 92.5, Tina. And that's up here at the top. So yep. on the grate, it's gonna be a little bit less. If you could keep it around 90, that would be perfect. 95, pretty good too. Hey, Cheesy. Hi, I have returned with the cheese. And I brought some extra cheese with me too. <laughs> All right, now what do we? What's our next step here? Well, the next step is we're going to load up the grate with the cheese, but we got to make sure when we put all these pieces on, okay, that we're inside that cast iron deflector. So we want to make sure everything is over right. the deflector, no air coming up directly on the no, like that. Uh, okay. because it, it'll melt. But even if you have to put the cheese on there in this direction to fit it, oh, okay, that's yeah. fine. We just want to make sure it's well within the deflector. You know that makes total sense because I would be so stuck on putting it flat down like this. What's the difference, right? It's just these little things that I wouldn't think of. So thank you, I appreciate that. Okay. Let's piece this puzzle together now, shall we, Tina? All right. All right, cool. So I'm gonna start. Now, since you said it, all I wanna do is put this cheese standing up. So I'm gonna put this one standing up. Yes, I would too. I love it. I can't believe that I wouldn't have thought of that. And you're the puzzle doer. I am a puzzle doer. All right, see this piece, I think is a little bit too far. Okay. Just really make sure you're in, and then I leave you know, some space in between so all that smoke can get. Right, so we've got like a probably an inch or two of space in between each piece of cheese yeah. that the smoke can gather all around the whole thing. Right. right. Cool. You did a great job, Ron. Well, thank you. It looks awesome. I can't wait. Now, how long is this going to take? 
About two hours. About two hours, okay. Now, if so? you run out of smoke, yeah. or it gets too hot, remember, you take out charcoal, leave the wood. So I'd say probably every 15, 20 minutes, we'll come check the temperature, yes. make sure we're on track. Okay, yeah, so. so this is your first time. Right. It's always better to watch. Hey, I, listen, I'd, I'd, I'd rather be careful and know, you know, so if you don't have an infrared thermometer, might be a good idea for you to get yourself one. Thermo makes this, Thermo Works makes this one. It's a great product. So, you know, anyone, Harbor Freight, I know sells them a lot of places. Yeah, they're easy to get. Yep, they are. Cool. Arr, arr. <laughs> oh boy. All right, everybody. Well, we're about two hours in right now. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. What do you All think? Right. Are we ready? Two hours? I'm ready. All right. I kind of knew that. So you already told me. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Look at, you can see Super the color. Soft. Oh, look color. how much it's softened up too. Yeah. They're falling over. It almost looks a little melty. And you see the, the moisture coming I out? I do. Yeah. So this is ready. Now this is relative. How okay. much, much smoke you like is how long you leave it on. Uh, Ron tends to like things he tells me not quite as smoky. Right. I like mine very smoky. So we went in the middle and went with two hours. Yeah. So, uh, you know, while she was sleeping while we were on our little break here, <laughs> um, I, I did some research, looked it up. You can go, like people go five hours. If you like it really smoky, go for longer. How about it? The other thing I want to talk about, our fire really maintained perfect temperature. Yeah. It never went over 94 degrees. But if we wanted to, we could take this smoking block out. You could take the charcoal out, just get some so some long tongs to work it with. That system works great, Tina. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you brought that up because I never would have thought to do it like that on a two zone like that. It's really good stuff. I'm a genius. You are a genius. So you ready to take this up? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's go here, Albert Einstein. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right. Are you done? Yes. Okay, we can take the cheese off now. <laughs> I should right. be really gentle. Right, we just have to be careful because it is soft, right? Yeah, oh yeah, it really is. Wow. Okay. So once we get this off, it's best <laughs> to let it chill before we put it in the vacuum seal bag. Okay, that's that was, I was literally just getting ready to ask you now, do we have to chill this or let it come to room temperature or, you know what? I want to show you guys something. Look at this. Look at the way that it formed to the grates here. That's kind of cool. It's really neat. So it softened up. It didn't melt. It just softened up enough to do that. The hard Parmesan even did the same exact thing. And that's going to be delicious. That can't wait. You know what I think it's going to be? It's going to be so good. I uh, can't stand it. Look at the other side of that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Let me get you a little better shot there. Look at that. Is that cool looking or what? Mm. I love it. All right. That's it. Now what? All right, just take this whole tray uh -huh. and put it in the refrigerator, let it firm up a few minutes. Wait, I get to go to, to the, the refrigerator. refrigerator. All right, folks, we got about, what, 20 minutes in the refrigerator yeah. so far, right? That looks good. Just as long so, as it was firmed up. It's, I can't believe how much it firmed up that quickly. So that was kind of nice. Now, anything we have to do before we go to the next step? So I like to take a paper towel and just blot off that excess oil and okay. moisture. Right. I just find it goes in the bag easier. Okay. And then that's it. Cool. So let me explain to you what we're going to do. Tina was just telling me how to do this. Now, our next step, we're going to take these, we're going to vacuum seal them. Uh, it's important that you do this for about, what, two weeks, right? You're going to leave them in the refrigerator yeah. for about two weeks? Two weeks. Why is that? What does it do? It lets all the flavor permeate, and when okay. you vacuum seal it, it just keeps it all inside so it goes into the center of the cheese. So I'm going to take a stab here. I could be wrong, but because we just smoked the surface of it, once we get it in there, like you said, vacuum seal it and put it in the fridge, it's kind of going to soak through All so the, the middle of the cheese has right. flavor as well as just the outside ring, right? Exactly. Awesome. All right, cool. So let's get started. I think we're going to start with this one. I labeled it, oh, so good. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to drop it in the bag. Right, right in the bag. Okay. Put it all the way in. Now let's see here. Entertainment. So just make sure the end is up in the track, right? Mm -hmm. And all we have to do then is just lock, lock it. Lock it. And I like to do it on the moist mode, just okay. so it just slowly. So some don't have a different mode. This one has a moisture mode, so you're gonna hit it on that. Yeah. We're just gonna hit it and should vacuum the air right out of that, right? There you go. Go Keep for it. Keep our fingers crossed. Yep. It's working. Yay! And then just seal, right? It'll stop when it gets all the air out automatically. All right, I think it's good. I think we're there? Oh, yeah, the seal button is off here, so yep. okay. So you are done. Awesome. So that is what one piece of vacuum sealed cheese looks like. We're going to go ahead and continue with the rest of the one, two, three, four, five more. All right, Tina, that's the final one. How about that, huh? Yes. Parmesan. Nice. Okay. Now, what's our next step? We got them all free, uh, free, blah, 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 blah. vacuum sealed. Now, what do we do? So now that you got them vacuum sealed, yep. you just go pop them in the refrigerator. Okay. And then, you know, you got to. Keep me entertained for two weeks until they're ready to taste. Oh, good. She's going to be here for two more weeks. Yeah. 
That's great. All you right. want you want me to put these in the fridge for you? You know where I want you to go? Turn the refrigerator. One eternity later. All right, guys, so it's two weeks later. Hey, has anybody else had house company for two weeks? I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. She's still here. Anyway, um, I think you can probably tell because last time our weather was sunny. Beautiful, sunny weather. And look at it out there now. Bad. Yeah, it's not so nice. Anyway, our cheese has been sitting there for two weeks. So it's time that we're going to eat our cheese. So what should we do first? It's time to cut the cheese. Oh, okay. Let's do that. All right. So you picked one of my favorites, the sharp. I was going to say, I wanted to go with the cheddar first. We got some sharp cheddar here. Mm. Ooh, nice and chilly too. Mm. All right. I guess the only thing we have to do now is just cut into it and put it on a cracker. Put that on a cracker, dude. All right, and then we'll uh, give it the old taste test of Rooney. What do you think? Oops. Yeah. Nice. Quality control bite. Quality control bite, as Miss Tina Cannon says. Guys, if you're not subscribed to Tina Cannon's Instagram or anything like that, go hit her up at tinacannoncooks.com. Smoked cheese on a cracker. Cheers, my love. That was the worst high five ever. <laughs> but it don't you know what? Apple. It was delicious. Mm. Mm. Hey. Mm. <laughs> She's been practicing. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Pina. <laughs> okay, then aside. Mm. Hold on. Cleanse the palate. Mm. It was easy too, wasn't it? I, you know, I've never done it. Cause I've always been, it's, it's kind of daunting. I've always been, I don't want to say afraid to try it, but I, it's the unknown. And I, and I was really curious. I, my mind is literally blown about how easy this is and how freaking good it is. And to do it in the heat here, I was actually worried myself because yeah. I've never in a hundred degree weather right. and the humidity that we had, sure. I, I was a little afraid. Yeah, well, I'll but tell it you worked. what, it, it worked fantastic. You know what I love? It's got that hint of smoke. I always try and preach on everything I'm cooking. Smoke is an ingredient. Yes. You know what I mean? You can overdo it, just like salt, just like sugar. You can overdo it. I mean, that's fantastic. I, when I was a kid, we grew up and we went to, uh, to Vermont a lot. They make a lot of cheese up there, cabbage cheeses up there. But we used to go to this place called Harrington's. They had all these free samples of smoked cheese, and I'd bite them. And, oh, God, it was such a horrible flavor. That's probably another reason I never wanted to try it. But this is fantastic. And this is just um, a regular block of cheddar that we got at Aldi's. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's just a regular old block of cheddar. We saved a lot of money because the price of smoked oh my God. cheese versus smoking your own. Oh, uh, yeah. And I you can't know even what's imagine. in it. Yep. And we got beautiful grapes to go along with it, too. Yes, we Yeah, do. thank you. Don't touch my grapes. Try smoking some cheese. It is so good and it is so easy. It's not mistletoe. Simmer down over here. <laughs> <laughs> but really, give this a shot, all right? I didn't think we were going to be able to control the temperature like that. We never had to take charcoal in or out. We, we got really fortunate. And it was literally 100 degrees when we cooked this out. I mean, or 98 or whatever it was, something like that. But it was crazy hot here. And the humidity was like 92% or something like that. But in any case, I can't wait to dig into these other ones too. This was fantastic. Smoked cheese, Tina, I was kidding about having two weeks. Come here. You're always a pleasure. We love having you here. Please, will you come back and make more videos with us? Maybe I'll come up by you and make some it's videos. It's your turn. All right, I gotta come up there. We're gonna have to go to Georgia. We ready to go to Georgia, Juan? Yeah? Okay, good. We're gonna go up to Georgia and make some videos. guys. Smoke cheese, that's all I've got. Remember, while you're here, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Subscribe to the Fogo channel. Join us. Join the Fogo family, right? We all, I'm part of it. She is part of it. You can be too. Hit subscribe. Anyway, that's all we've got. I want to thank you all for showing up. Remember to get out and grill. And we'll see you next time in the Fogo Life. Captain Ron and Tina out. out.